unmuted. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we have recent goal scorer and midfielder Jack Skane here available for questions. Let's start with the first question from Jamin Moore. Hey, Jack. Good to get a chance to talk to you again. Um, you've, uh, you, you've, I think you've shown a lot in the times and opportunities that you've gotten over the past couple of seasons. You scored a goal last year that, that got the team a, a point and, uh, and now you know, contributed in a very meaningful way in the last two games, causing a, causing a, a situation, a press, pressing situation that turned into a goal against St. Louis and then getting yourself a goal in the last game. Um, we've seen you score free kicks. We've seen you score penalties. You know, what, what do you think that you, know, you want to make sure that, that you show in these opportunities, be it for the next game, the next couple of games, and the starts that you'll get while the team has, you know, lost players to injuries and to uh, international call-ins. You know, what is it that you want to be showing in these next couple of games to make a case for more time the rest of the season, maybe some more starts? Thank you. Um, yeah, I think just continuing to do what I'm doing. I, I think um, being dependable and um, – kind of causing chaos in the press is important and that's something I can do. Um, I also think that running behind opening space for other people, making smart runs that, you know, where if I get the ball, there's a good chance it's, um, it could be a shot on goal or it opens up space. Like last game, a bunch of, a bunch of balls to a capo were opened up from runs. And I think that the, the stuff in the box is, is something I'm really, really um, comfortable doing. Um, so I, I think if I just continue to do that stuff, then it'll speak for itself. Awesome. We'll take a next question from Robert Jonas. Uh, thank you. Um, got a two-parter for you. Um, uh, I know a lot of the game is uh, in preparation, but uh, you know, the emotions of game day play a role as well. Um, I was hoping, uh, you know, we didn't get a chance to talk to you after the game at Stanford, but uh, if you can kind of walk us through the experience of getting that goal and experiencing it in such a large uh, crowd and, and what that meant to you. And then as my follow-up, you know, this weekend, uh, Lucci did mention the, that the midfield ranks are a little bit thinned out, and he mentioned you specifically by name at the beginning there, although he didn't say whether you'd be starting or not. But you're going to be turning from a, a friendly environment like the Stanford Stadium crowd to LAFC, which is one of the, the most difficult away venues to play in. Um, so, you know, kind of juxtaposition, juxtaposing both of those, uh, you know, the experience you had and the mindset you have to have going into LA, I wonder if you could kind of get, get a feel for your, you know, the emotions that go through your mind as you, as you, you know, experience those, uh, those, uh, those types of situations. Yeah, regarding the goal, I mean, yeah, it was cool. It was really cool. There, when you score and you look up, it's really one of the first times that in that game I really looked up and saw um, how many people were there, and that was kind of surprising, to be honest. Um, it, it was a good spot for me to be in, but at the same time, it's it's fortunate that that ball from Acapo comes to me, and um, and I'm glad I put it in. But you know, to score any sort of goal in that situation, it doesn't really matter. It's um, it's really cool to be able to see, see that environment from that vantage point. Um, and yeah, going into LA, you're right, like it's a different environment. A couple seasons ago, I played the second half of a game in LA, FC, when we, we went down maybe 2-0 in the first half, got a goal back and we lost it. It was near the end of the season. Um, and it's a tough environment to play in. There's no doubt about it, but I think, I think we have a, a good team that is is pretty mentally strong um, and is just going to be focused on the game plan. We'll take a next question from Alex Morgan. Hey Jack, uh, thanks for taking the time to speak to us today. Congrats again on the, the goal over the weekend. You know, we saw you in that first half against the, the Galaxy move back and forth from the, uh, you know, the left hand side to the right hand side. Uh, and I'm curious, um, you know, if you think that there's going to be more flip-flopping in order to, you know, keep teams on their toes, uh, and what else do you think that you guys can do to try to, 
um, you know, maybe maybe make it harder for teams to, to shut you down and, and, you know, make it less predictable for uh, the way that you guys are playing up top? Yeah, I think it's possible that we continue to switch around some. I think the fluidity in an attack like that is dangerous because I think that um, at the in the last game it was Christian and I out wide. And if, if you're able to kind of switch around and make runs not just in a straight line, but that kind of push you in different parts of the field, it's just really, really hard to defend. And if we're both comfortable playing both sides, then, you know, that can happen on its own. Um, but those those runs that move you around the field and, you know, it might be like a switch position. It might just happen randomly. Um, they're really, really hard to defend. And so that's kind of the, uh, I think that's kind of the purpose there. We'll take one last question, a follow-up from Jamin Moore. Hey, Jack, another somewhat tactical question. I, I think what's really interesting is that you've, you've been playing with Miguel Trauco, you know, over there. And, you know, he, he seems to, to drift centrally quite a bit uh, in the half spaces, which is interesting because it's left-footed. You know, typically you'd expect an overlapping fullback, uh, you know, that, that's, that's got the strong foot on that side and, uh, and you're right-footed. So, you know, how, how do you see, like, the, the interplay that, that you and Miguel can have? And does it matter to you if, if one is more wide than the other so long as, you know, you've got each other's back and when one decides to push forward, the other is prepared to be able to support defensively the ball's turned over? Thanks. Yeah, I'd say, well, first of all, Miguel's, I mean, he's just, he's, he's got a gifted left foot, so it doesn't really matter where on the field he is. He's like a quarterback. He can just put it, he can put the ball wherever he wants to put the ball any part of his foot, spinning in any way he wants, it, it's incredible. So playing with him is pretty nice because you get him, you get him behind because he can put the ball there. Um, and the whether he's inside or outside or I'm inside or outside, we that's just kind of a flow thing or a, a situational thing. And if if our purpose is, you know, to say for example, the purpose is to get behind him, it doesn't matter if one's inside, one's outside. You can make it work either way. I think. 